did it, you guys. We did it. <sighs> I sifted my first worm bin. I'm going to show you the results. I have my first technical nursery. Let me go and get it. It is. Okay. So, I basically have three stages here. Let me move your camera down. All right. The first stage we shift, shifted, sifted out using this screen. Um, I don't have the measure tape, but it's approximately maybe a foot and a half by a foot and a half. Um, these are the rounds. And um, what my goal was, was to have a sifter that was large enough to get even the Euro cocoons, which some of mine were measuring five millimeters. So this is going to allow that. Um, I can tell you the exact measurements on this round right here, right now. This is a little bit smaller than the seed cleaning round screen was that I had. Or maybe, yes. Um, so, okay, so it's at zero now. And, uh, I don't, okay. You go past and there. So this is a 4.68 opening. And all the cocoons and all the castings did fall through that, so it worked wonderfully. Then, what we had on the seed cleaner has a way that it goes this way, and then it drops off the edge, and then there's another screen where it takes it the opposite direction. So, on the bottom, we had a screen that was for basically just your windows, it's a super fine screen, but so the stuff that comes off the top first on that round, this is, this is how well it gets. Um, I mean, what the, the size of what I had after all my, it seemed like all the bedding and substrate had been, um, you know, devoured. Um, this is about the size of particles coming through the cocoons are in here there's oh my gosh there's so many cocoons on the bottom um and then it looks like a really good substrate to start out with these are the overs um these pieces that look kind of like castings i don't think they are i think they're just small pieces of say maybe dirt debris peat moss that's been rolled into a ball so that's my first initial kick out in the pan um, it, it usually, it's going to have the worms in it and the larger size particles. So that's what I'm going to put then into my nursery pan, which is this. This is what I'm calling my nursery. I'm putting it here on the heat map. Okay, then what falls from that five millimeter um, is a larger, I'm trying to think. It's a larger yeah, I don't even, I guess I don't sift it out so much because I do, but, um, so what, what it is, it goes on to the screen and then what falls out of the screen is this absolutely outstanding, super fine casting. It is just, I mean, no cocoons in here at all whatsoever. This is a super fine casting. So that's what I would be calling 100% pure castings right here. I mean, yes, it's got some debris in there a little bit here and there. Um, but that's it. And there was quite a bit. I feel like a massive amount for one bin. Um, and then the amount of time that it took was nothing at all. I mean, probably to sift one bin and it filled more than, let me find the cup. Okay. So I had this whole pan of this casting size and it is showing that it is well I guess this isn't for filling water it was just I don't know how much is in there okay so then these are pretty much done when you pull them out of the sifter they're done you can put them in a bag and sell them I'm going to think about selling them as what's called the super fine castings probably for the in-house um, plant, 
house plants because you're not going to have any worms hatch out in your house plants that way. Then what I did was there's the bottom or the third overs that come out have both the cocoons and the castings in them and I guess I didn't save any of those here but I brought them inside and sifted them through this screen and I think this is an eighth inch screen um, so to see if it did do better and it it did sift out more particle debris and that's this size here the eighth inch is this size is a really super nice size casting has a lot more organic matter left in there um there are some cocoons some of your smaller cocoons do get out into this size casting so i guess i would sell that as a separate casting where yes there's potential for some cocoons in there so don't load up your house plant because when they hatch they're probably going to go looking for food once they run out in that container um, there you go. So, uh, then whatever doesn't get sifted out in the eighth inch screen, I go ahead and throw that back into the nursery. But what I'm thinking of doing when <clears throat> I do a whole tower's worth of, uh, bins through the sifter, um, the overs just come out, they go in their own container somewhere, going to be a nursery or something because there's still plenty of bedding substrate there. It'll run through the super fine screen, which I just showed you those castings. That tub's ready to go. It can go into its own tanks as far as, you know, bagging them up for sale. And then I have this last product that I feel is a little iffy. Um, it still has a lot of debris in it, but it still has all the cocoons in it too. So I'm going to put that through the sifter a second round, that bin. And I have this really, really long, this is at least a three foot, I think, uh, eighth inch finer mesh screen. And then I also have the smaller size, like the rounds mesh with the same screen on it. So I feel like if I run it through there twice, it's going to get every single bit of finer um, casting out that I can. The smaller cocoons, they're going to go through it. They're going to get sent off with the castings, no doubt. Um, and I'm okay with that. Nothing I can do about it unless I get to gigantic worms that are breeding. And I think maybe just the juveniles might lay smaller cocoons. So those will just go. And then whatever is retained back from that into the bin goes into the nursery. Those should have all of my larger cocoons in it. and. Um, plenty of organic matter to feed those worms while I put them on the heat mat and get them hatched out and then I can bait them out hopefully with a um, basket to feed them using the basket method and pull them up out of there and then uh, move them to a grower bin. Um, so I hope that you guys understood what I'm just trying to say here on all these sifts but I believe I'm going to have to run two sifts. Um, because each time I'm getting, the first time I'll have three different sizes, and then the second time I'll run it through with two sizes. One goes to the nursery, one gets me the second size castings. And then I'll sell, like I said, the medium size castings with the possibility of having the cocoons in it, and then the one where there is absolutely no cocoons because it is just such a super fine casting. All right, we will now... Uh, proceed with some of the video on our maiden <laughs> attempt that was not without issues. I will say that, um, but we're working through those. We got to get the uh, sifter actually anchored down to the cement so it doesn't hop around. That will help tremendously. And then add a few more sheet metal pieces in a couple spots where we were losing some cocoons and castings out the side. Okay, and maybe build a front chute that contains everything even more. Um, We'll see you here in the next video.
coming out. moving a little a rate a little bit fast and it seems to be coming beyond this screen here so we are going to make a bracket that out of sheet metal that um, is gonna have a lip here it's gonna come to the front of this and then it's gonna come up and hook on a nail like another device we made for this so I'm gonna go ahead and sweep up these castings here the floor is wet and so uh, it rained last night and I will scoop those up and reclaim those and we will get started again once we get this piece um, built. Stay tuned. <laughs> those things down I notice it holds that thing back but um maybe, maybe have to tighten it uh, loosen it and then tighten it you know I think that the next thing will be if you go the other direction um pull it towards me well i think we're getting it all out of there so it don't matter this way <laughs>